Hello! It is Monday. It is another weekly reading vlog and it has been raining for like two weeks solid in England. Where is my May sun time? Where has that gone? Right now it is actually suddenly blue skies and sunny and I was like I'm gonna watch town. I'm gonna go to town on my lunch break. I look out the window, I survey it, I can see blue skies, I look the other direction and I just see black just coming straight towards me and I check my weather app and it says that it's gonna rain at two o'clock. <laughs> I want the sun. I swear I was sat out on my balcony like about five weeks ago maybe, working outside because it was so hot. What has happened? Where is the sun? Apparently there's gonna be a heat wave on the 15th of June. Now I've got the first week of June booked off so I would love it if the sun would come out then because that would just be great. But enough about this ever-changing bizarre weather we're having this summer. Is it summer yet? No, it's not summer yet, is it? No, the first day of summer is in June. Okay, we'll let it off, it's still spring. Also, if you can hear a bell, I thought it was the best thing ever. And now every time I move even an inch, it just jingles. So I don't know how good an idea it is. But reading update. Oh my God, I finished playing Bad Heroines. I uploaded last week's reading vlog. And as I was loading it, I realized that everywhere I've been like, oh, I finally finished this book. I had to change it to say like sort of, because I did finish it on Saturday night, but I didn't finish it on the vlog. <laughs> so I finished it at like 1.30 in the morning on Sunday, technically but I stayed up late reading it. I loved it. It came out as 4.5 stars. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be 4.5 or five, but it did really well in my eyes. I just thought it was fantastic. There was so much of it I loved. It just didn't quite push it to a five star. At times, I think it could have been increased a little bit in pace, but I think the pacing and the way that the plot unfolded was what made it so enjoyable for me. It really felt like you were being strung along on this genuine journey. I loved it. I thought it was so good. So that. It's finished. <laughs> I feel like that took me so long to read because it was a big book, so over 600 pages, but also it was like a tall book. So not only was it chonky, like width wise, but it was also height wise. But that means I can read something else. So on Sunday, I started All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is a YA, well, it's Caroline O'Donoghue's first YA book, she writes adult normally. This is a YA book following a main character who's not doing the best at school. She is really struggling and she gets in trouble at school and ends up being put into a detention where she clears out this really old cupboard and in there she comes across some tarot cards. And she starts doing tarot readings until she does one for her old best friend and it goes wrong, kind of, and she basically, the best friend, the old best friend ends up going missing. So that's the mystery within this plot. We've also got the intrigue of the tarot cards and I can't quite work out yet if this is a fantasy or if it's just kind of got that witchy tone about it. I did start this yesterday and I have read 95 pages so far. It's got a very addictive style. I really like the witchy vibes and I'm intrigued to see where it's going. I am working on an ad for this book on my Instagram, so I am gonna be promoting it over there. This is not part of the ad in any way. All my thoughts and feelings are my own, but just in the openness of transparency, that wasn't a sentence. To be transparent, I am promoting this book on my Instagram in a couple of weeks or like a week by the time you're watching this. It does not come out yet. It is out at the end of the month on the 27th, I think. So I have been given an early release copy, which is very exciting. So I can't wait to sit down and read some more of that. It's gradually getting darker. See the rain's coming back. It's good that I didn't watch town. Okay, gloom. Anyway, so yeah, my laptop is back. The power is back. <laughs> I'm reading different books. I feel like last week was just strange. I was reading the same book the whole week which is becoming more of a regular thing for me because I don't want to have to like really put a high amount of pressure on myself to read x amount of books. However I always just feel like the content I'm making isn't as exciting as the content where I read a varied amount of books in a week. I like mixing it up so I think this week maybe I'll read more because this is quite an easy writing style whereas Playing Bad Heroines was something that I really had to sit down and really focus on. So Hopefully I can vary it a little bit and have different things in each vlog, but yeah, I had my power cut last week. My laptop had to go back to Apple, but everything's good now. However, I am actually missing in my kitchen the front of my cupboard doors. So I have been having work done on my flat since I moved in. I have my ensuite completely renovated, like that was completely ripped out and started again. My main bathroom also had things like a new sink and a new bath, but not the entire changes in the way that the ensuite did like the ensuite was completely redone apart from the toilet so that was retiled and everything and um, the main bathroom i actually went shopping for yesterday to get some more bits just to make it feel a little bit more 
my bathroom rather than just somewhere I go to the loo because I don't use the shower in there because it's an electric shower and it's rubbish. So I've now wired up the bath taps to the top and got a new shower head. So that's great, which means very importantly, I can shave my legs in the bath stood up in the shower over the bath because my ensuite is like an enclosed shower unit in the corner and it's very difficult to shave whilst you're showering because it just you just get water everywhere and like it just runs down your leg and gets rid of the soap that you've just put on to shave with this is probably tmi but there we go <laughs> that's how i personally shave in the shower so i've set that all up now and i'm super pleased with it i've got it looking really nice in there and it kind of the vibe in that room is like jungly it's all green so very excited about that but my kitchen has been the thing that's taken me the longest so my kitchen hang on i'm gonna try and list off sorry you probably don't care about this kind of thing but i like talking about it because i love interior design things so my kitchen we have already ripped out the fridge which was built in so ripped out all those cupboard units got a new fridge taken off the worktop and replaced that partially retiled the tiling was being finished and then covid lockdown three was it i don't even know how many lockdowns anymore the december lockdown came in and that tiling had to stop so it's half tiled but the main big thing that's going to be the huge difference oh and there was new flooring the big thing is going to be the cupboards so the closest i could get to properly customizing it to what I want within the budget that I had for it is basically it's all completely being painted all the cupboards but they're also being detailed with new handles and stuff as well so there's going to be like bevels put around the cupboards and there's also going to be copper handles it's going to be painted deep blue and finally that's happening so the reason it's a bit messy in there at the moment is because all the doors have been taken off of the cupboards so they can get the edging put on them and then I hope either late this week or early next week, I'm gonna be kicked out of my flat because the fumes are gonna be quite strong for the primer and it's gonna be painted. And I'm so, so excited because I feel like I've been waiting for this for so long that once that's done, that's everything. I'm getting a new blind for my bedroom and I need a new, I need a radiator in the hallway. But once those two things are done as well, it's all done, everything is done. I would like to retile the main bathroom, but that is gonna be shelved. So I'm so, so excited because it feels like I've been waiting for that for so long. For anyone that's thinking, why am I not painting it myself? Uh, one, I know that someone that's professional would do a much better job and because it's painting the kitchen cupboards, which is something that has to be done in a specific way so it doesn't just chip off, I would rather just leave it to them. And two, the amount of time that would take me would just be too much for how, like I work two jobs, I want to have downtime as well. It just, it would take me so long. Um, three, I'm just not precise enough for that kind of thing. And I can guarantee you I would spill it on my lovely floor. So it just wouldn't have been a thing for me. <laughs> so I'm very happy to let someone else do it because there isn't gonna be an ounce of the current brown color left. Just to give you an example, we have got open cupboards. This one is kind of half open. That bit's been left for some reason, but that's the color it currently is this is the new walnut worktop but that's going to be completely gone and be like a lovely deep blue and there'll also be copper handles i'm so excited i'm so excited for it to be done look open cupboards i don't dislike the look of the open cupboard to be honest it's not horrendous but it's certainly not going to stay like that so i'm very excited to finally have that done so lots and lots of cool things happening i can't wait yeah happy monday i know that this exposure is going to be awful but the purpose is i'm showing you what's out here I literally just said about how the sun was shining through, but I could see this giant cloud. The giant cloud arrived. You cannot tell because this camera just wants to make everything look really bright. It's so rainy. I love the rain. I love it when it's cozy, but ultimately at this time of year, I'm ready for sun. I've reached a point of the seasons where I really, really enjoy the like as we become into autumn, then get into winter. I love that because winter is Christmas for me and autumn is cozy. And by that point, I've almost grown sick of being all constantly too hot. Whereas now I've got to the time of year where it's getting, well, it's meant to be getting hotter. And I'm now sick of being cold all the time. So I wait for it to get hotter and then it gets warmer and I'm all happy. So I feel like I dive in and out of what I prefer. Ultimately, as much as I love reading inside when it's cozy and it's raining, I love reading outside in the sun and just I love spending my weekends like that last year because we weren't obviously able to go out in the same way and who knows what will be happening this year 
but last year I just spent so much time outside on the swinging bench at my family home reading. And this year I intend to go back and do the same thing quite a lot, but it just seems unachievable at the moment with this. So let me know in the comments, do you prefer reading when the weather is like this, the dark rain gloom, or do you prefer reading when it is really beautiful and sunny, but not too hot, like a nice warmth, but not like sunburn hot. What are your thoughts and feelings? Let me know in the comments. Hello, it is Tuesday and I'm sat on a very squeaky chair. <laughs> um, hey, I did some book shopping yesterday and I thought I would show you what I got. It was very wet yesterday and in the middle of me being in Waterstones there was a thunderstorm. So I decided to just kind of stay in Waterstones for as long as possible. I really browsed that bookshop like I really did there was this end of aisle that had loads of books down the side of it and I was trying to work out what the theme was I thought to start with it was translated fiction then I wasn't so sure and then I realized it wasn't and then I thought maybe it was women's fiction I still not 100% but I'm gonna kind of settle on women's fiction because I bought two of the books and that seems to be the theme that was linking them all because I was just sat there reading like the first few pages of all of them because yes, I just thought they would look so fantastic. And I picked two that I shall now show you. The first one I picked is Love is for Losers. Now this author's name, I think I need to Google how to pronounce. I think if I attempt that, I will get that disastrously wrong. This is apparently a signed copy is this gigantic sticker that is going to be removed. It tells me, <laughs> that cat's too cute. This immediately gave me In at the Deep End vibes, which is a sapphic, contemporary, humorous journey of one woman discovering her sexuality. This seems to be apparently quite funny. It's told in diary entries, which I instantly find quite appealing, but it's a journey of love and sex, but also heartbreak and apparently kittens and kisses that turn the whole world upside down. The blurb is very, very short. It says, Phoebe Davis has opinions, most of all that love is for losers, but then she meets Emma and now she doesn't know what to think. Apparently it's hilarious and life affirming. So this looks really good. I think I've vaguely seen this about before, but never picked it up. But honestly, I don't have many books like this. And sometimes I do fancy something that just looks like it's gonna be a bit of fun with some seriousness woven in, but generally just something to relax with. So I picked this up. I think the author is German and then has spent part of their time living in London and part in America as well. So this I think is set in London because to start with it was talking about Westminster. So I think this is set in London but written by a German author. I'm really excited to read this one. I love the cover, it's so cute. Then I also got Breasts and Eggs by Miko Kawakami. This one I have seen recommended by Holly from Spoopy Holly and she says this is really good literary fiction so like the kind of pretense there that it is going to be more flowery writing I suppose and honestly I love literary fiction when I love the story but that put me off a tiny weeny bit because I thought yes this looks really good but I wasn't 100% sure if it would be fast paced enough for me however Seeing it in store, I picked it up and had a look through the first few pages. The writing style is really addictive and also the font, in my opinion, is rather big, which instantly makes it less daunting because I do really enjoy literary fiction when I can get stuck into it and when it really sparks something in me, but I also do find it quite daunting, but it is a genre I want to read more of. So this is about three women who are all, I think they're all related to each other. It's a sister and then the sister's daughter, possibly. Um, but the main character is wanting breast enhancement surgery and she goes on a journey to 
try and do that and I think it's kind of looking at society and the pressures and all of these different things happening at once for these women um, but the bottom line of the blurb says this is a heartbreaking journey of three women in a society where the odds are brutally stacked against them this is an unforgettable debut from a major new international voice and it's also a radical portrayal of working class womanhood in contemporary Japan it looks really interesting this looks like the kind of thing I would enjoy and hopefully there's a lot that can be discussed around it as well and this may well fit a prompt for a readathon I may or may not be doing a TBR for very soon. That's what I'm gonna say. Ooh, the intrigue, the intrigue, the, the intrigue. Anyway, as far as my current read goes, I'm really, 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 really liking this. All Our Hidden Gifts has such a fantastic witchy vibe to it and it's giving me such good atmosphere, but also there is this mystery element that may well include some kind of magic thing that's happened but we just don't know. There is a girl missing. We do not know why. It's all linked to these tarot cards. And I am really, really loving it. So I'm up to page 153. I was reading it in bed last night. Watched loads of episodes of The Bold Type last night. And oh my God, episode 10, season four, broke me and then healed me and then broke me and healed me and kind of left me a bit broken. Such a good show, such a good show. I'm never gonna not talk about The Bold Type because it's so empowering, it's so strong, it's so important and it just breaks down every barrier. But do you know one thing I really love about it is it doesn't fall to those typical plot lines that are so frustrating. The plot lines I hate the most in film and book not the plot line, but the moments that frustrate me the most, that I feel like I'm really repetitive, is when somebody knows something the other person does not know. And it's something related to that other person's life. And that other person ends up knowing and finding out that this person knew the whole time. And then ensues an argument that lasts for like half of the episode or half the film or whatever. And it's like, how dare you not tell me? I can't believe you. I thought you were my friend. And it's this huge argument. And I think personally about times where I've had that kind of thing in my life, and I feel like I would just be like, oh, you could have told me. And they'd be like, well, I didn't want to upset you. I thought it was better to keep it from you. And I'd be like, oh, don't worry. I'd rather have known. I don't know. Maybe it would be different in their kind of situations. But it always, that part of a plot always really frustrates me. Because <laughs> I'm always just like, just don't, like, every time, every time it happens. Whereas a bold type does not fall prey to this. I feel like it is a bit more of a realistic representation of how we as humans react to things. But honestly, I just feel so empowered when I watch it. The character's fantastic. Jacqueline is the boss and she is just so cool. I absolutely love Jacqueline. So anyway, those are my thoughts and feelings <laughs> on the bold type. I've said this in every vlog, but I will continue to say it until I finish the series and then long after because I just love it. So book mail and current read. These are my books. And I don't know what I'm gonna read after this actually. Oh. Okay, I need to do this soon, but I don't know when it's gonna be. I need to read from Blood and Ash because <laughs> I have not read that book yet. Everyone says they love it. I think one of two things is gonna happen. Either I'm gonna absolutely love it and think it's the best thing ever, or, and the more likely option I feel knowing myself and how I read, I am gonna absolutely hate it and I'm not gonna be able to stand it and I'm gonna think, what are you all going on about when you say you love it? So basically I want to find out which of those it is. <laughs> Do I love it? Do I hate it? I don't know, but I feel like I wanna know. So I wanna read that soon, but that is big. And obviously I've been reading a lot of big books at the moment with A Little Life and with Playing Bad Heroines. So I don't know if I wanna jump right into that this week when I finish All Our Hidden Gifts, but we'll see. Everyone says it's a really quick read and I do have a week off coming up soon, but it wouldn't fit into the categories necessarily of the readathon that I'm taking part in. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what I can do with it. So that's my Tuesday update. Hey, welcome to Tuesday. Hello, it is Thursday and I have finished a book. I have finished All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue and I absolutely loved it. I have not rated a book, five stars, for about two months maybe. It was a five star read. It was a five star read. I am so happy that this has broken my spell of no five star reads. I've had a lot of four or 4.5 star reads, but there was something about the atmosphere combined with the intrigue and the plot and also the fighting force for good in this book that really just hit me and it was just 
so good. I am, as I said at the start of this video, working on an ad for this book and I am now so excited about my caption because I just wanted to glow about this book. I would say if you like something like The Raven Boys, you would really like this. It has that kind of contemporary but magic crossover in it. I think I said at the start of this vlog I wasn't sure if it was a fantasy or not. It definitely is but it's like a soft fantasy. <laughs> like it's got the element of magic there in the sense of witchcraft. Was that wind? Did you just hear that? That was really squeaky, was that wind? Anyway, it's got the magic there through witchcraft but in a much more subtle way. It's not like witchcraft in the sense of everyone's magic or there's a magic school or anything like that. It's just that our main character has these abilities that are more spiritual magic Wiccan type of thing than have a magic wand, say a spell kind of magic. Although there is still spells involved, but it was so good. I'm gonna put it down and talk to you about it a bit more. One of the many things that I think this book just brings to the table is its open and honest conversations about things. So a lot of this book centers around finding this girl Lily who has gone missing and that is the overlying plot of what's happened to her. But at the same time we've also got relationships and friendships forming that go on a journey as well and have their own personal different plot lines happening. So there's a lot of talk about sexuality, there's also a lot of talk about gender and kind of gender stereotypes and gender conformities and things that should be so much more freer and there shouldn't be these rules and restrictions on but there's also, contrasting all of this, this massive hate group that are, I really hate saying the word homophobic because any other word that describes people that are anti something is ist, like sexist, racist, and homophobic, phobia, it's not a phobia, it's not a phobia, that just makes it sound absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, it's the word that is what I'm meaning to say, so they're a homophobic group and they don't agree with anything on the LGBTQA plus spectrum. So they are not okay that one of the main male characters dresses in women's clothes sometimes and wears makeup and is trying to figure themselves out and there are attacks made towards that within this book and I think the fact that we've got the contrast of the group, the hate group, versus these people trying to love who they love and love themselves and be themselves and be the best versions of themselves that feels the most real. There is a whole bit in this book that represents how important it is to feel yourself and how you feel most powerful when you're reflecting the truest version of yourself, whether that's through the clothes that you feel suit you, the makeup, the way you portray yourself. And I think that was so powerful and the way the author wrote that felt very emotional. And like I was reading and I was like, yes, go on. So I think the fact that we've also got this mystery going on, but we've also got the contrast of hate and love. I think that shows the kind of world we're living in and the fact that whilst we would love for everyone to be accepting of everything and everyone, it's just not, we're not there yet. And I think that we really should be there, but we're not. And that is really, really sad. So this book doesn't just glamorize the journey that these characters are going on and finding themselves. It also does show the difficulties and the restrictions and the people that are very anti that. And I just thought that was really powerful. I think the whole book was a lot more impactful than I expected it to be. I don't know why, I just didn't really know what to expect from this going in, in other than the fact that it had the kind of tarotness to it. But I loved it, I really loved it. So five stars to all our hidden gifts. Do pick it up. I think by the time this vlog goes live, you'll be able to order this and get a copy this week that you're watching it. So do that. I will leave a link down below if I can remember to do that. This is not part of the ad, but now I just want to promote the book because it was really good. So I'll put a link down below and you can check it out. Yeah, all our hidden gifts. That also meant it was time to pick a new book. So I'm going to do a challenge next week because it's Ashley's Do The Thing-a-thon. I keep wanting to say Do The Thing-a-thon. <laughs> um, it's so basically the premise being just do that thing that you've been meaning to do. So like whether it's read more classics or read more translated fiction or read for a hundred pages a day, like anything like that. So I'm going to be tackling a specific book next week that I'm gonna keep the air of mystery around and not tell you until you watch next week's vlog. So I'm gonna be reading that book and I think that'll probably take me all of next week, although a lot of people tell me it's a quick read, but it's a long read. So 
I don't know, but basically I wanted to start a book that I could finish by Sunday, so I was then fresh and ready to read the mystery book that I keep thinking the name of and reminding myself not to say the name of because intrigue. Anyway, <laughs> so the book that I've chosen to start is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. This follows a girl who has come to New Orleans. She's from England. Her sister is over in New Orleans doing a study abroad or like she's at University of America and there are some serious killings happening in New Orleans. Killings? Murders. Murders sounds a little bit better. I mean both sound pretty bad but anyway. There's some mysterious murders going on in New Orleans with bite marks I think? So it looks kind of vampire-y? Yeah puncture marks on their neck and naturally Mina wants to find out what's happening. She's a big horror fan. She's getting a job in this haunted house where they look at all these different horror films and kind of recreate them in the haunted house. I read a little bit of it last night, not much at all, 29 pages, and I really liked it. It's got that spooky vibe to it, but also it plays on the love of horror. And I did study different bits of horror films when I was at university and Prior to that, I was watching a lot of Hitchcock and stuff to prep for university because my mum wrote her dissertation on women being represented in Hitchcock films. So she was always interested to chat through that kind of thing with me. So I always had that intrigue there. So I'm very excited to read more of this. But what I will say, this is such a random observation. <laughs> this book smells like plasticine, not in a good way. It smells really weird. I don't know if it's something to do with the fact that these pages are not, they're not sprayed edges, but they're kind of grade like newspapery almost I don't know if it's something in that but it doesn't smell good guys does anyone smell their books like I just I mean hang on let's just that smells good that's good this one it doesn't smell great <laughs> and I was reading it very close to my face last night because I really need, <laughs> need a new glasses prescription and I, I seem to be noticing that I'm just like this with things now like here here is comfortable over here is too far away so I'm like here and yeah, I could really smell it. <laughs> so that's my observation so far. It's good, it's creepy, and it smells. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Thursday. I am meant to be going home, well, I was meant to be going home yesterday because my kitchen was meant to be painted yesterday, but the dates have been delayed a bit. Great. So I think it might be happening either tomorrow or Monday next week. So I'm gonna go home for it because I've been told that the fumes are gonna be really stinky, but also everything's gonna be wet in there. And like, it's quite a nice excuse to spend an extended time at home with my family. And Ava will hopefully enjoy to see me and you guys will see Ava in vlog. But I think I'm gonna go home tomorrow night now. I think that's what's gonna happen. So I will read this here tonight and try and read as much as possible because I just don't read as much when I'm at home. It's only 300 pages. How does that work? That is like the same size, but this one was 400 pages. Okay, fine. <laughs> so that's my plan. I also am going to finish The Bold Type tonight. I don't think I'm ready. I have got three episodes left of season four and then season five airs for America this week, I think, or next week at some point soon. But not for us, I don't think. I think we have to wait a long time, which is sad. So anyway, that's my updates. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I already feel like this reading vlog feels a little bit better. <laughs> like the last two I just felt like I was in a bit of a rut with like filming and things and talking and saying things that are actually meaningful and important about the books I was reading so I think I'm hopefully back on it now maybe. I don't know but if you think so too you can give this video a thumbs up or you can subscribe to see more of this and there's a Patreon link as well. If you want to see any more or support me in any way, my Patreon really, really helps with that. And I do podcasts, I do live streams, I do really fun behind the scenes stuff. We do games and polls, it's all good fun. That's all linked down below. I'm not ending the vlog or anything, I just thought I'd do like a little mid vlog plug. <laughs> anyway, I am gonna, gonna go. Chat with you later. Start your computations.
hello. It is the end of the day on Saturday. I'm back home and I'm here to wrap up the vlog rather nicely this evening to wrap up the vlog. I have finished Mina and the Undead so I thought this was a good way to end the week or kind of end the week. I've still got another day and I will be reading another book but it will be a mystery book because you will see it in my next weekly reading vlog which I'm very excited about but I absolutely loved this. The atmosphere was brilliant. This is all set in New Orleans and it made me really want to learn more about New Orleans so I'm looking at some other books about New Orleans. I've got a couple already and I've got a couple on my TBR now and well on my wish list slash TBR. Wish list? Is a wish list a TBR? I mean kind of. But anyway I don't own them yet. <laughs> I loved this. I gave it 4.5 ish out of four to 4.5 out of five stars. I just thought that the way the atmosphere was written made me feel like I was there. It gave the good spooky vibes. I enjoyed the 90s setting as well. This is set in 1995. And I liked that we didn't have the technology of the mobile phones that we have now to distract the characters at all. Like this was very much just in the moment. It felt very immersive for that reason. I enjoyed the character relationships with each other as well, but mostly the last 50 pages I was just like, what is happening? What? Like, so many things happened, so many twists and turns, and I was just like, what is going on right now? Like, I don't know where where this is going, and I thought it was just really good fun. That's what this book was. It was fun. I enjoyed the horror references. I enjoyed the 90s, 80s references. I enjoyed the character relationships with each other. I enjoyed the setting and the atmosphere. It was all really good, so I would definitely advise picking up this book if you have not already. This is by Amy McCaw and I believe it is her debut. So fantastic job. Absolutely loved it. I know I said <laughs> it smelled a bit. <laughs> um, I can confirm that the more I've read it the less the smell is there I think because it's in the atmosphere. So yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. Obviously I'm just taking the piss with the smell thing like this book is really really good um, and I really liked it so I finished that. I also went book shopping. I went into a local town with my mum and Ava and went to a couple of indie shops. I went into a shop that sells some really funky trousers, it sells really nice earrings and jewellery and it sells a couple of bits for houses so I got some flat bits but I also got a really nice pair of earrings that I have here to show you. I think they're so pretty. So here's my earrings. Oh okay I'm gonna try and do it like the beauty vloggers do but ah that these are my earrings. <laughs> got some funky trousers as well and I also got some books. So the first book I got is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. I bought this because this constantly <laughs> references this book. I thought well I feel like I should read this. I don't know how urgently I'm gonna read it like it's kind of dauntingly non-paragraph text but it looks interesting. I have watched the film many many years ago. I think it's like a modern classic almost. I don't actually know when this was written but I think it's become almost a, sorry it's Sting reviewing it. Yeah Sting reviewed it he said wonderful erotic sensual. Okay fair enough. Um, <laughs> this was written in the 1976? Yeah 1976 so apparently it's set partially in New Orleans as well. So that ticks my box there but I yeah I don't know when I'll get to it but I thought it was a good one to have as a staple horror. I also got Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. Now I have seen this around a lot. I keep getting ads for it. I've seen a couple of my friends have got it and I have seen it in Waterstones but the sprayed pages, the stenciled edges that I'm about to show you, I think are only available in independent bookshops and because I was in one of those today I was able to get this. How beautiful is that? Stunning. Absolutely stunning. I love it. As usual when I show you these kind of books I feel like the last paragraph is the most prevalent to give you a kind of atmosphere summary. Moving from the pleasure gardens of Victorian London to the battle-scarred plains of the Crimea, Circus of Wonders is an astonishing story about power own and ownership, fame and the threat of invisibility. It looks really good. I love a circusy kind of story. I just, it's so pretty. I could not not when I saw it today. So those are my book updates. I also have been making little wooden animals with Ava today. My mum got us both a little kit. She had a parrot, I had a narwhal. So I have been making narwhal, the narwhal, who I think I called Nancy, but very, very cute. So I've had a really nice day. It's been really good all around. So yeah, 
thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. So I read, finished Being Only Undead, and then I also finished all our hidden gifts. And I'm nearly, so nearly finished, like an hour out on the audiobook of finishing Legendborn, which I have been reading for a couple of weeks because I just haven't been listening to audiobooks as much. But I hope to read that, maybe finish that today or tomorrow. I don't know, we'll pretend I finished it in this vlog because I'm so close to finishing it. But that's my wrap up for the vlog. If you did enjoy, please do give it a thumbs up, comment down below what you've been reading, or subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. And I do have a Patreon link down below where you can support me in any other way. There's extra fun content there, and there's also going to be live streams and things happening next week, this week, by the time you're watching it, this week. So if you want to get in on that, there's a very cool exclusive live stream happening that I'm very excited about. So that's all, link it down below. But thank you so much. For any form of support, it means the absolute world to me. Tune back in for my next vlog, which will be out a week on Monday from when you're watching this, which is going to be a reading vlog for Do The Thing A Thon with a book that I don't know how I'm gonna feel about, but it's a mystery book. It's not really that much of a mystery, but I'm not gonna tell you right now because intrigue, ooh, anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.